from Minute Maid Park in Houston. Interleague Baseball on MLB The Show. It's the Miami Marlins taking on the Houston Astros. First pitch coming at you right after the break. Just about set to go now. And on the mound in this one, Spencer Arigetti. Well, coming into this game, hitters are batting under 250 against this starting pitcher. So it just shows you how effective he's been. He's been able to move his pitches around, add and subtract, change up the look so the hitters don't get too comfortable and start squaring up the baseball. We'll see what he's got in this one. Goes down looking. Well, nice job right there. He struck him out twice. The pitch before looked like it was strike three. Doesn't get the call. Bears down. Throws another quality pitch for the strikeout. And here is Brian De La Cruz. One out, base is empty. Close, but called a ball. And now three and a one. On the ground to first. It's in and out of his glove. But plenty of time to recover, and that's the second out. And time now for the Marlins lineup. Not the highest team batting average for this squad. They're down towards the bottom of the league in total hits, and Singy, because of that, they don't score a ton. Yeah, and Boog, I'm looking for a little better performance out of them today. I mean, if they're going to be dangerous, if they're going to be able to create scoring opportunities, they're going to have to start making some individual adjustments. A lot of players in this lineup probably aren't happy with how they've hit the ball so far. So today's a chance to get something going. Two out spaces empty. Tapped softly on the ground, Pena. In plenty of time to first. Marlins set down in order. Nothing doing for the Marlins. Now here come the Astros. No score. Back after this on the show. Back here in Houston. And today's starting pitcher, Trevor Rogers. Well, it hasn't been a great year so far in terms of ERA, but he's had some decent games, and there have been some flashes of greatness, if you will. We'll see today if he's able to get ahead of hitters and perhaps get some swings and misses, put himself in a position to bring that ERA down, because you know in the back of his mind, beyond the W, he wants to have a better earned run average. Late on that fastball. Ooh, Baya. you got to remember to take the donut off the bat, partner. To the right side, Berger steps on the bag. One gone, bottom half of the first. And let's take a look at the lineup. And perhaps part of the game plan is to get into the bullpen as early as possible. They're facing a staff that's blown a lot of games in the later innings. Boog and his hitters, you're aware of that, but you don't want to become too relaxed and wait too late in the ball game because you never know what could happen on any given day. But with that said, even if you fall behind early, you've got a lot of confidence that this game will not be over until that final out. He was all over that one. You often hear the phrase, short to it, long through it, and that's a great example of it right there. Got the barrel in the hitting zone early, squared it up with the well-timed swing, and came away with a beautiful line drive in the center field. Spoils the two-strike pitch, and he'll see another. He's a bad ball hitter, so even if you get him to chase pitches outside the zone, he still might beat you. Not an easy out by any means. And that one hit to first. Finds its way through base hit. They fired it quickly, so it's first and second with only one away. He kind of rolled over on this pitch a little bit, but he got enough behind it to shoot it through for a knock, and we'll take that any time you can get him to find a hole. First and second, one out. And here's the catcher, Gaynor Diaz. And he walked him. 
Well, that sets up a really big at bat in this game. These are the moments when everyone in the stadium gets really locked in. And stepping in for the Astros, Jake Myers. The 1 1. And another ball. Well, all eyes on the double play ball in this spot. No better way to get out of this inning. Swing and a miss as he was out front that time. Bases loaded, one away. Just misses the mark outside the zone. Well, lots of pitches thrown in this first inning, and it's kind of that nightmare scenario for starting pitching. But you know what? It's still early enough. He can settle in. He can get some length if he just cleans up his mechanics a little bit. Three balls, two strikes the count. Ball four, and a run comes in to score. Well, obviously, we're in a pretty great spot to take the lead right there with the bases loaded. And I'll say, that was a good, patient at bat to draw the walk. And you know what? Still counts as an RBI. And now, Jeremy Pena. And strike two. Well, they're really running up the pitch count in this first inning. Lots of confidence from this team that is perhaps the hottest in baseball right now. Bases. One runs in. Now a second crosses the plate. Runner around third. He's in there. And they lead by four. Well, he wasn't afraid to hit with two strikes. I think he choked up a little bit, maybe spread out, but he got the job done right there. One out, runner at second. Mauricio Dubon up next for the Astros. Ball to strike. That one missed. Well, it's not the inning he was planning on to begin this start, but you've got to find a way to shake things off and give your team some length and put up some zeros. The two one. Swing and a miss. Nice changeup. Out to short. And that one finds its way through. Fires it to the plate. It's offline. The run comes in. Well done. Drives in the run. Just one of those seeing eye base hits through the infield. He just kind of rolled over on it a little bit, but sometimes those can find a hole and get you a knock. So next up for Houston, Chaz McCormick. Kicks and deals. Too high. Ball. Dubon leads off first with one away. Swings through that one. Didn't recognize off speed. Thought it was fastball. A little bit out in front. Gets a piece and stays alive. And a pitch. Hit on the ground might be two. Edwards to He's second. Out. On to first. Double play. And that's the inning. But they take the lead thanks to a five-run outburst. On to the second inning now from Minute Maid Park. It's the Astros five and the Marlins nothing. Back here at Minute Maid Park, top of the second, and now the right fielder, Jesus Sanchez. The pitch. That one hit to right. McCormick has it sized up. Makes the grab, one down. The first baseman, Jake Berger, getting ready to hit. This kid picked up in a trade. A lot was offered and given to get him, but he's got a real high ceiling. The 1-1 one -one is fouled off. Kicks and fires. Swings and misses. Couldn't catch up to the heater. And now the shortstop, Xavier Edwards. The pitch. Hey!
battling here as he fouls it away. The Astros leading by five here at the top of the second. Got him. And a nice inning of work there as he sets him down one, two, three. And the Marlins down quietly. It's five nothing. Back here in Houston. And now the first baseman, Greg Kessinger. And the pitch. That one finds the corner. One and two. Saying he wasn't very sharp in the first, got hit around a little bit, just wasn't able to locate particularly well. A lot of stuff for the fat part of the plate. Yeah, Boog, he wasn't fooling anyone. It's a tough place to be because it's not always obvious what adjustments need to be made. Sometimes it's location. Sometimes it's being too predictable. Sometimes you're now tipping your pitches. He's going to need to figure baseman. it out quickly, though. So the Houston lineup turns over. Here's the Astros leadoff man, Jose Altuve. One down, base is empty. Swings hey. through that one for strike two. One ball, two strikes. Foul ball left side. He'll see another. And a pitch. The punch out there. Two gone. Two outs, base is empty. And next to hit for Houston, Alex Bregman. Out there to center, moving under it. Brings it in for the third out. Top half of the third inning, the and now for the Marlins, the Vidal Brujan. Vidal Brujan. Right-hander kicks, deals. That's out to center field. On the move. No trouble here. Puts it away for the out. One away. The third baseman, Emmanuel Rivera. Emmanuel Rivera, the next to hit. The 1 1. Puts it in the air out towards left center. Myers snags it. Two down. Nick Fortes now at the plate. Just off the outside edge. Now two balls and a strike. Foul ball there. Next offering upstairs. Really good take, especially with two strikes. Jazz Chisholm Jr. in the on deck circle. Ripped on the ground a second to first. That's the third out. Miami down in order. Still looking at that 5 nothing deficit. Set for the bottom of the third. Now it's Jordan Alvarez. This is a batter right here who really produces in these night games, and we saw the latest example of it in his first A.B. And that one is lifted in the air. Chisholm under it. Makes the catch, and there's one gone. Now batting. The catcher. Here's the catcher, Yainer Diaz. Yeah. And a 1 1. That's down and in, a slider missed. He got two balls, one strike.
Next That's offering three. is down low. Three balls, one strike. Bounced up the middle. Dives and he can't hang on. He decides to eat it and they catch a break as they get a base runner at first. One gone runner at first. And now the center fielder, Jake Myers. Singy, you got to appreciate a guy who's this good defensively. I mean, watching him track balls in the outfield, it is beautiful. And I would say that most great defensive outfielders, it's kind of natural. There is some work that you can do to it uh, to improve your game. But ultimately, you either have it or you don't. One ball, two strikes. The pitch. Fouls that off to the left and will do it again. There's one guy that I can think about, Boog, who started as a third baseman, Alex Gordon, and then became an elite perennial gold glover out in left field for the Kansas City Royals. But he's a guy, when you watch him play, you would imagine that that's all he ever played in his life was the outfield. And another ball. Yeah, some guys just have instincts, right? I mean, that's the way it goes. We talk about Larry Walker, the Hall of Famer, and his instinct on the bases, despite the fact that he didn't play a ton of baseball as a kid. That one lifted to left. Makes the catch. Just pulled off of it a little bit right there. That front shoulder coming open now instead of staying closed. If he does that, he's going to be able to go up the middle the other way with some authority instead of a fly out to left. Here's the shortstop at the play. Jeremy Pena. And he deals. Slice to right. He dives, but he can't make the catch. And now they'll have runners on the corners with two away. Wasting no time. He's two for two now on the night. And just a triple and home run away from the cycle. Seriously, we're starting with this already. Manager out of the dugout now. And it looks like we'll see a change on the mound. That'll be it for Trevor Rogers. We'll be back in a minute with a new arm on the mound. Here's a new pitcher from the pen, Tanner Scott. Well, walks have been a big Tanner. issue for him this year, Scott. so I expect these hitters to be patient up there. Here's Mauricio Dubon. Lefty out of the stretch, runners at first oh. and third. Just missed. Swing and a pop up. Foul territory for the catcher. Fortes makes the play, and it's out number three. Two left for the Astros as they are unable to add to their 5 0 lead. And welcome back to the ballpark. Jazz Chisholm Jr. now. Number two, Jazz Chisholm Jr. The wind of the pitch. So a foul ball makes it one and two. It's so hard to slow yourself down when you see that juicy breaking ball, but the most success happens. When Wide the kick in the one two. And yeah, there's a ball. This one popped up. Bregman settles under it. And there's one down. Up next for the Marlins, the left fielder, Ryan. And at the plate for Miami, Brian De La Cruz. And the right hander deals. And a good eye there. The fish, hitless so far in the game. And that's ball four. 
It's tough after falling behind a hitter, two balls and no strikes, but now at least he gets a fresh start against a new batter, but he needs to get back into the strike zone and start pitching with conviction. At the belt and fires. Swing and a miss. Now one and two. It's just been an impressive outing so far. Continues to pound the zone pitch after pitch, and he's been able to stay down. That's what's been key. Righty delivers in the air, left side. Dubon pulls it down. The right field, number 12, Jesus Sanchez. Jesus Sanchez, the next up for the Marlins. Ground ball right side, Altuve. They take the out. force out, and that is the third out of the inning. And we're back. Leading John Chabi and Chris Singleton with you. And we'll leading like off you. the bottom of the fourth, Chaz McCormick. McCormick. Not Three even goals. close one there. Three. Three and one. Well, these Astros really impressing me with the quality of their bats in this one. It's been fun getting a chance to see them go to work. They were obviously able to run the starter out of the game in the third, so they've set the table for a win, and now I'm sure they're thinking it's time to feast. Well, that was one of those high percentage advantage counts where batting averages are just so much higher. Really good swing right there. He got a pitch that he knew he could handle, allowed himself to stay back just a tad bit longer, and he hit the ball on the screws. At the play, Greg Kessinger. So if they're looking to feast, are you saying they've already got a plate but are looking to go back for seconds? <laughs> yeah, I'd say something like that. That's a little bit low. Popped up under this one. And makes the grab. And there's one away. That was a good pitch to hit right down now the heart of the plate. Had pretty good timing on it. Just okay. got underneath it a little bit and popped it up. Altuve. Here's the former MVP, Jose Altuve. McCormick, the base runner at first with one out. Altuve officially joined the 2000 hit club in 2023 with every career hit as a Houston Astro. Third player in club history with 2000 hits. And they get Altuve for the out. And there's two away. Third baseman number two, Alex Bregman. Man at first, now the number two hitter, Alex Bregman. Two outs. Good eye right there. Three, two, two out. Runner on first. A lot of movement in the infield. Hitters got to stay focused on the pitch. You're Don Alvarez. Hitting on deck circle. And now the lefty. Swing and a miss for the strikeout. Gassed it right by him. One left for Houston, but they hold a 5 nothing lead. set for the start of the inning and here's the first baseman Jake Berger off the mark there two and one you know these Marlins they're not going to be happy with the at-bats they've been having so far just one base runner to this point and it's not exactly early anymore they have guys in this lineup capable of sparking something but it just hasn't happened for them yet and now it's going to be Xavier Edwards. The pitch. 
Swing and a miss. Ugly swing One right ball. there. Two Great strike. deception with the change up there, and it's all about arm speed. If that arm speed can look just like the fastball, a lot of times you'll get that hitter to swing and miss. Two outs, base is empty. And now it's Vidal Brujan. Two down, nobody on. And we're at the top of the fifth. Now this is in the air down the line. McCormick trying to get there. No trouble here. Puts it away for the out. And that is that. Back here at Minute Maid Park. Here's Jordan Alvarez. Go. He's a guy who does it all the with the game. lack of contact in today's no, no. game. This guy hits for contact, so he delivers average, but there's on base and slugging, too. Way out front for strike two. Early in the count, you have to be real careful because of that power, but then if this hitter gets a strike nope. or two on him, he's still very comfortable. And because he has the ability to get the barrel to the baseball, he's a threat deep into the count as well. Boog, if I were him, I'd be nibbling around the plate as well. I mean, this guy is just capable of hitting pitches outside of the zone and driving them a long way. Kicks and deals. Fastball for a strike. Miami's bullpen with some action. Number 71, the rookie right-hander, is getting loose. Alvarez gets his lead at first. Nobody out. Next pitch is downstairs. Way inside, and that hit him. He had two strikes on him, and he hit him. Jake Myers up next for the Astros. And a pitch. Man, I mean, nice job just presenting it to be better than it actually was. It misses. It's a strikeout. Man, that slider bearing in on your hands like that. It's just so tough to fight off. It's kind of like a cutter. and just can eat you off, saw you off. I'll tell you what, hitters have nightmares about that pitch. Perfectly executed out there on the mound. Runners at first and second with one gone. Last half of inning number five. Two balls, one strike. The 2 1. Foul ball. Two on, one out. That yeah, misses the zone. Three balls, two strikes. And that's awfully close. I don't know how you take that. He's seeing the ball out of the pitcher's hand really well right now. Swings through that one. It's a strikeout. Man, there was no deviating from the fastball right there. He just kept coming after him with it. Here it is. Hit it if you can. And he just couldn't find a way to put it in play. Two on, two outs. On the ground to the left. Rivera. They get the force. Gets him easily. Ends the inning. We go to the top half of inning number six. And now for the Marlins, Emmanuel Rivera. Riding to the plate. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. 
Slider got him for strike three. Well, that's always the key to effective pitching is getting ahead in the count. And as a pitcher, it really allows you to start expanding the zone. Hitters become defensive, and all of a sudden, that plate starts to get really wide. And what happens is, because of the pressure, you end up committing to a pitch as a batter before you recognize what it is, and that's what leads to the strikeout. A little out front there as he swings through it. the string with the changeup struck him out. He's really good hitting the baseball the other way. So credit the pitcher for having him out in front of that pitch. Clearly he had him full. Back to the top of the lineup. Jazz Chisholm Jr. will hit next. Left field. And that'll fall for a base hit. Around first. Digging for two. Now the tag at second. And he's out. Trying for two. A long throw, and that's the third out. Number 71 gets the call from the pen. He's pitching on two days rest. And stepping in for the Astros, Chaz McCormick. No. And that's off inside. the inside edge. And it's two and one. Well, these Astros showing great discipline at the plate, and patience definitely seems to be the name of their game in this one. The numbers say their chase rate, or swings at pitches outside the zone, is under 25%. And I think it's a big reason why they're scoring runs. Here comes a pitch. Fights it off. You'll see another. By not chasing out of the zone, they're getting good pitches to hit. When you can do that, you have a much better chance to square up the baseball and do damage like they have so far. And a swing and a miss. And that's the first out. Well, that's the moneymaker right there. Two strikes, slider down and away from a same side thrower as the hitter. I mean, that's just tough. You're looking to protect with two strikes and very difficult to lay off. One down, base is empty. Right down the chute, two balls, two strikes. Signs of activity in the pen for the Marlins. A.J. Puck, the left-hander, is getting that big fastball of his ready to go. Foul ball, another 2-2 upcoming. The pitch on the ground to third gets it to first oh. two up two down now battle the second baseman Jose Altuve so the lineup flips over Jose Altuve up next for the Astros two down nobody on here in the bottom of the sixth There's a swing and a miss. Wow, good luck catching up to that Two one. Strike. Two down, nobody on. Three. Swings and misses, struck him out. New inning getting started, and at the plate for Miami, Brian De La Cruz. De La Cruz. Well, timing is the key to great hitting, and right now, that door is still locked. They haven't been able to figure out pitch sequences, and it's impacting them across the board. And another ball. That one misses, and that's ball three. The wind of the pitch. 3-1, and he couldn't come up with it. 
Second walk of the game for him, and he's been really patient at the play, a game plan that he's sticking to. He's just not going outside of what he's looking for up there. So, man aboard. Here's Josh Bell. And it is two and one. If you're going to get something going, this is the time to do it. You get the leadoff man on. Everybody's got to look over the shoulder and say, I'm just going to keep the line moving. Don't try to do too much. That one the other way. It drops in, gets away a little bit. Pretty much a model swing on that one as he ripped it into the opposite field gap. And I'm sure he's going to be watching that one back on video because that's the kind of swing you want to bottle. So many positives that led to that knock. And now, Jesus Sanchez. And another ball. This pitcher's done a good job of disrupting the hitter's timing with the mix of pitches and changing speeds. You want to keep that front foot inconsistent for the batter. Their swings are hesitant, and that's exactly what you want on the mound. Two and one now. Swing, and that ball smashed on a line. McCormick pulls that one down. Runner tags at second, and he's in safely at third with one out. Now batting the first baseman, Jake. Here comes the skipper, and we're going to see a pitching change in this spot. Spencer Aragetti out of the game, and as he heads for the dugout, we'll take a quick break. New arm on the mound when we get back. So they turn things over to the righty, Hunter Brown. He last pitched two days ago. And now the first baseman, Jake Berger. Singy, he's got a history of coming through in the big spots. I know I like to talk about I'm not sure whether clutch actually exists, but you look at the numbers, and this guy always seems to deliver in those spots. Eight, Swing and a miss. And the count, one and two. Well, I think it's the ability to assess the situation, understanding what the pitcher has, what he's trying to get people out on, and then being able to use the entire field. Chop to third, Bregman. To first, and he beats it. Everyone's safe. And a run comes in to score. <laughs> Xavier Edwards gets a chance to hit here. Two on, one out. And that one missing low. If you're a guy that can only hit to one field, then you're really not going to be able to come through in clutch situations because pitchers are going to adjust. But because he's able to use the entire field, that's why he's so successful in these situations. Two balls and a strike. Here it comes. And a foul ball. The Marlins down by four here at the top half of inning number seven. On the ground, right side, four, six. But he beats it. Good hustle, and the inning continues. So digging in, Vidal Bruja. If you were an average catcher behind the plate, I'd say take second base, but this isn't a catcher you want to run on. His quick release is unreal. Bell on third, Edwards on at first with two down. Yeah. Late with the swing there. From a pitcher's perspective, that's a beautiful splitter right there. As a hitter, you don't like it, but he's commanded his fastball and out of that same tunnel, that splitter comes and the bottom just falls out of it. Two outs. Two two In the dirt, nothing happening on the bases though. And the righty deals. Lifted in the air, right center field. McCormick sizing this one up. Hauls it in to end the inning. Two men left stranded, but they do push across one. Midway in inning number seven, and it's time to stretch. It's the Astros five and the Marlins one. Back 
here in Houston. Set for the last half of the seventh. Here's Alex go. Bregman. The, Astros, the third baseman, Alex Bregman. Here's a 1 1. Just Ball missed. Two. two balls, one strike. Here's a swing and a drive left field, and he knew it. He sends it out of here. Home run number 10 of the year, and they tack one on the board. It's 6-1. And that shot makes their grip on the lead even tighter. High fastballs, especially with good velocity, can be really hard to catch up to. But he stays tall, his top hand works extremely well, and he absolutely clobbered it. So now the Astros' designated hitter, Jordan Alvarez. And another ball. Part of the order coming through now, and with one home run already in this inning, they're definitely looking to do some more damage. Nobody on, nobody out with a run in here at the bottom of the seventh. Hard hit, right side. Bruhan to first in time. And yeah, they get the out on Alvarez. The, the catcher, Yainer Diaz. And next will be the cleanup hitter, Yainer Diaz. And here it comes. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. And there are two outs. Up next to the Astros. So two down now. And here is Jake Myers. Spoils that one and it remains two and two. Bounce to the left side. Tosses the first. Inning over. One more for the Astros, and it comes on this solo homer. And this is now a 6-1 ball game. You're watching Major League Baseball on the show. And welcome back to the ballpark. Ready to begin the eighth. Here's the third baseman, Emmanuel Rivera. And now the count, one and two after the swing and the miss. Activity in the Houston bullpen. Seth Martinez preparing to come on if needed. Valdez, the lefty, warming up as well. And a foul ball, he stays alive. The one, two. Goes down, swinging for the strikeout. Some high cheese for strike three. Stayed with the fastball and all three pitches to put him away. Yeah, just straight attacked him. And those locations of the fastball is what really stood out to me, Book. Started him inside, really good location. Then he went away for strike two, going kind of east-west, and then finishes him off up in the zone with some good velocity. That's just great execution. One down, base is empty. Fastball Aye. for a strike. <laughs> Next pitch is outside. The Strohs leading by five, and we're at the top of the eighth. Three. Swing and a miss, and he's down on strikes. Two up, two down here in the top of the eighth. Back to the top of the Miami order. Now it's the Marlins leadoff hitter, Jazz Chisholm Jr. Oh. 
inside oh, just down. missed well as good as things can be it can be a tough day at the office even for the skippers seeing the offense just sputter not able to get anything going Aye. next offering in there for a strike and that is strike two That yeah, one missed. Yeah. Left field, way back there. Back gone. His 11th of the year, it's 6-2. The count was full, but he was ready to swing it. That's the exact definition of hitting the ball where it's pitched, taking that outside fastball and driving it the opposite way out of the ballpark. You want to bottle that type of approach. Next to hit, Brian De La Cruz. And Next now ball two ball. and one. Two balls, one strike. The wind and the pitch. Comes up empty. That's strike two. Got him swinging. Slider got him for strike three. But not before they answer back with a solo home run. Now a 6-2 ball game. You're dialed into the show. Back now, now new pitcher on the mound as we roll into the bottom of the eighth, Declan Cronin. Declan. Out for the 30th time this year. And stepping in for the Astros, Jeremy Pena. The shortstop, Jeremy Pena. On the ground right side and foul ball. And a pitch. Fights that one away still one and two. And a rope in the center field base hit. Man aboard on the leadoff single. Just so sound in his mechanics. Hits against a firm front side. And the hands just continue to carry through the middle of the field. Man at first. Mauricio Dubon digs in now. Not close with that one. Ball two. Pena on at first. Nobody out. Keeps the at bat going with a foul ball. And the pitch. Still two and two after the foul ball. Kicks and fires. That okay. misses off the outside edge. Swing and a high fly ball out there towards left field. He's got it. The right fielder, number 20, Chad. McCormick. Chaz McCormick up next for the Astros. Now fly ball to right center. Sanchez gets under it. Makes the catch for the out.
Greg Kessinger up next for the Astros. And another ball. Great RBI spot here. Just got to stay focused on the pitch. The runner will be in motion, so something in the gap should definitely score it. So now two on and two outs. Not what he wanted to do right there, Boo. That keeps this inning alive, puts a runner in the scoring position, and a chance for this offense to add on to their lead. So the batting order turns over. So next up for Houston, Jose Altuve. On a strike, the pitch. Hey. And they'll do it again. And he dodges that fastball. Hey. Got it by him for the K. Two left for the Astros. They lead it six to two. It's the top of the night, and there's a new pitcher on the mound, Framber Valdez. And he's got a nice lead to work with, so he should come in throwing strikes, attacking these hitters. And now the switch hitting first baseman, Josh Bell. The designated hitter, Josh Bell. The 1-1. One -one. And that one fouled off. The pitch. Gets a piece there. We'll do it again. And a pitch. That one down the line. Now one He's gone up. in the ninth. Now batting. Right fielder. Jesus Sanchez. He's two outs away. And now, Jesus Sanchez. The fish down by four here at the top of the night. This one in the air center field. Myers under it. Nabs it. And there's two down. Hey, man, four pitches, two outs. That is an excellent pace. Marlins down to their final out. And here's the first baseman, Jake Berger. Two down, nobody on. The Astros have some action in their pen. Seth Martinez up and loosening in the pen. Valdez is just one strike away. Hard on the ground at first. Steps on the bag himself. Ball game. Well, this team was ready from the first pitch of the ball game. Swinging the bats, scoring runs, just very aggressive. I feel like they set the tone, and that tone created a momentum that took them all the way to the finish line. Nice win today. And your final, 6-2 to two for Chris Singleton and our entire crew here at MLB The Show. Thanks for stopping by. I'm John Chambi. Talk to you soon.